Hunting and fishing have been a way of life since the cavemen walked this earth. To survive was to fish and to thrive was to hunt. They scoured the land for mammals and the oceans for fish. Thousands of years later, this absolutely revolutionary way of living has evolved in the modern day as a recreational activity. Men and women, infants and children, all around now participate in the sports these two fine specimens call hunting and fishing. But how has that evolved today? Join us in following two modern men and their journeys. Hi, my name's Gus. I've been hunting since I was two years old. My papa told me to shoot straight or don't shoot at all. I've been hunting since I was just a little bastard. My pa took me rain or shine while my seven brothers stayed home with my mother. It's cause my dad thought that women were stronger than men. That's why I got a gun and my brothers got brooms. There is a large population of people who hunt. These people live by a code of conduct that help restore populations of deer, turkeys, ducks, elks to record numbers when regulated. When regulated, fishing and hunting can be great for species repopulations. Fishing and hunting often removes large mature individuals from species populations, which in turn can favor the survival of smaller individuals that can reproduce. Fishing and hunting can drive evolutionary change. With growing human populations, we have in innovated ways to hunt these animals more efficiently, sometimes, sadly, to extinction. Benefit for us calls for them. In species where it's difficult to determine between females and males from a distance, protection of females is often achieved through the protection of family groups. That's why there are now laws, regulations, seasons, all for hunting. These quotas have helped mothers live longer to produce more. These quotas also seem to make hunters avoid killing offspring. Cost for us, but benefit for them. The concept of hunting has been around since the dawn of time. It was for survival. Nowadays, it's not much about survival, more about instinct and recreational use. Through hunting, we've learned about land and agriculture and ecosystems that we would have never before. And with all the fees and permits and certificates needed to hunt now, a lot of that money gets put back to habitat improvements, maintenance, research, and population management. Hi, my name is Clive, and I've been fishing since I was just little. I, I do like to fish, yes. The history between fishing and the environment has been tumultuous at best, specifically due to something called overfishing. I always think back on this one example from history where fishing as an industry caused quite the stir. Way back when, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a locally found fish called the Atlantic Cod was produced in abundance year round. Because of this, New England rose rapidly to economic prominence and became an international fishing power in the 1800s. This was, of course, too good to be true, and soon the fish whose abundance named a peninsula were placed under protection for fear of complete elimination. The commercial fishing industry is often the first to be blamed for overfishing, especially on a scale as large as the case of Massachusetts Atlantic Cod. But the recreational fishing industry isn't blameless either. Commercial fisheries are incentivized to stop when populations dwindle to a certain point. They can't make money from fish if the fish are gone. Recreational fishers, however, have no such reservations. In fact, recreational fishers target the larger fish, the most fit and best breeders out of a population. These bigger fish tend to reproduce more often and have a greater amount of young at a time. So removing them prevents populations from recovering from overfishing. Unfortunately for these fine gentlemen, much of society holds unsavory opinions on their favorite pastimes due to their histories and their effect on the environment. Not all of us are bad. Some of us respect the ecosystem and are just trying to help. The bad ones, they do it for sport. They do it for trophies. Never would I. Socially, there are a lot of perceptions about people who hunt. There are people referred to as the slob who make awful shots and litter when they're out stalking. But then there's also those who often run into legal trouble with licensing and suspensions of their licensings and such and those are poachers. Let it be known that these people do not respect the ecosystem. 64% of people believe that hunters engage in unlawful practices that are unsafe. Half of those surveyed believe that hunters engage in drinking while hunting. Research has found that those who use hunting for meat, protection of people or property, 
and population manage it get flying colors. When it comes to sport or trophy, it, that's when societal approval plummets. Hunting for management gets 82% approval, while hunting for trophy only gets 29. What is being hunted also matters, as there is a big difference between approval ratings for deer, which ends up being 78%, and hunting an African elephant, which only gets 7% approval. I fear that when it comes to hunting, we all think of hunters as one big narrative when there are actually so many different kinds of people and what they consider hunting. Feel known that people think it's wrong. They do? Because of its history, there are many people who are against fishing, both as an occupation and as a hobby. The idea of catching and possibly harming or eating fish for fun concerns some who worry for the fish's well-being. Environmentalists raise concern over fishing for the best breeders of a population and how that could affect the development of fish species as a whole. Without the best, most successful specimens of a population, the development of fish can be stunted or otherwise poorly affected. Rest assured that, despite the backlash, these two men will not let any opinions, good or bad, rain on their parade anytime soon.